Precious One. Welcome once again to the Everlasting Gospel where the Word of God is shared with all those who would spend a moment of their time to listen to God's Word. Keep listening to the Word of God like you always do, it is the best thing you have to do especially at this moment of Earth's history. Fashion comes, and fashion goes, but the Word of God is steadfast and sure as God Himself. God bless you. Today's message is titled, The Sanctuary on Earth. Talking about ancient Israel, the Apostle writes, For indeed the Gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. The Gospel, as we have it today, was first preached to the Israelites in symbols, examples, and types. But the Gospel did not profit most of them because they did not mix the word with faith. God revealed the whole plan of redemption to his chosen people, and it was the duty of the people to have faith in it and then carry it to the whole world. Today, we have enough information given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and also, the Holy Spirit through the apostles. We have no excuse to believe the authenticity of God's word. In Psalm chapter 77 verses 13 to 15, the Bible says, Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Salah. The way in which God performs wonders by redeeming his people is in the sanctuary, according to the Bible. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 12. The sanctuary in heaven is God's throne room, and God opened the sanctuary in heaven to Israel by asking them to make a specimen of it for him here on earth, so he could dwell among them, and redeem them. Today, in this video, we are going to take a walk into the sanctuary of God in faith so that we may receive redemption. The size of the earthly sanctuary was 150 feet, 45 meters, by 75 feet, 23 m and fenced around on all four sides, with only one entrance at the eastern side. The sanctuary building had two rooms, the first part called the sanctuary or holy place or the tabernacle of meeting, the congregation, and the second part called the most holy place or the holiest of all. The entrance of the holy place had a veil called the first veil, and the two apartments were separated by another veil called the second veil. In front of the holy place, before the first veil, was a forecourt called the outer court or forecourt. In the outer court were the altar of sacrifice and the laver. In Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 to 5, the apostle describes the earthly sanctuary as follows, Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared. The first part, in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the cherubims of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things, we cannot now speak in detail. Inside the holy place, there were three different kinds of items. One, the seven candlesticks at the center left, two. The table of showbread at the center right, and three. The altar of incense at the middle just in front of the second veil. Behind the second veil was the most holy place which contained only one furniture, the Ark of the Covenant or Ark of the Testimony. The sanctuary had only one entrance, only one way in or out. So, also Christ is the only way, truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. John chapter 14 verse 6. The sanctuary and its services were shadows pointing to Christ's work as the Lamb of God and as the High Priest. Talking about Jesus, Peter said, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Jesus also said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture, John chapter 10 verse 9. 
The services in the sanctuary were of two kinds, the daily services and the yearly services. Let us start with the daily services. Daily services occurred every day where sacrifices for sin and thanksgiving were offered by any of the priests who were assigned to be on duty. Now the Lord called to Moses, and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting, holy place, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the livestock, of the herd and of the flock. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, he shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He shall kill the bull before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting, Leviticus chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. Burnt offerings for the forgiveness of sins, were supposed to be animals without blemish offered at the sinner's own free will. Only sacrifices offered from a willing heart were accepted by God, and God accepts us only when we willingly choose to come to Him. Every sin offering was to be without blemish, typifying the perfect sacrifice of the Lamb of God, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Any time a sinner went to the sanctuary with his sin offering and entered through the way, he would first come to the altar of burnt sacrifice. At the altar, the sinner shall put his hand on the head of the animal, confess his sins upon the animal, and then kill it before the Lord. The sinner, by putting his hand on the head of the animal and confessing his sins over it, typified the transfer of the sinner's sins to the innocent animal. The Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Therefore, the animal was killed and the blood was taken, instead of the sinners, to make atonement for him. The priests, Aaron's sons, collected the blood of the killed animal, and sprinkled it all around on the altar of burnt sacrifice. Then the body of the animal was cut and burnt on the altar which was in the forecourt. All these ceremonies were shadows or types or examples, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5, and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. As the blood of the animal was sprinkled around the base of the altar, some of the blood was also poured on the four horns of the altar. On other occasions, the blood was taken into the holy place and sprinkled on the second veil inside the sanctuary. In both situations, the sins committed by the sinner were first transferred to the animal, and then transferred from the animal to the sanctuary. The Apostle says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20 that the veil is the flesh of Jesus. Therefore, when we confess our sins and sacrifice them on the altar, they are transferred from us to Jesus and he takes the sins away. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John chapter 1 verse 29. In the outer court, before the priests could go into the holy place, they had to wash their hands and feet with the clean water in the laver. The laver was located between the altar of burnt sacrifice and the door of the holy place. This washing typified cleansing the soul from sin in the blood of Jesus. Note that we cannot clean our soul from sin ourselves, it is the work of Christ, the high priest, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. We need a renewal of mind through baptism in which Christ will wash us with his own blood and also give us his Holy Spirit. As the priest opened the first veil and entered the holy place, at the center right of the holy place was the table of showbread. Always, there were twelve loaves of unleavened bread on the table and the showbread was to be eaten by the high priest and his sons in the holy place. The bread provided sustenance for the priests in shadow, but in reality, Jesus is the bread of life, the real food for the soul. John chapter 6 verses 33, 35, 48, 51. By studying the word of God and applying it in our lives, we eat the body of Christ, the bread of life. At the center left of the holy place was the lampstand with seven candlesticks. 
The lampstand was filled with oil, and the lit candles provided light in the sanctuary at all times. In reality, Jesus is the light of the world, John chapter 8 verse 12, 9 to 5, and we will never walk in darkness if we follow his lead. Also, if we allow ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we can reflect the light of Jesus to the world. At the middle position of the second veil, inside the holy place, was the altar of incense on which incense was offered to God every morning and evening by the priests. The sweet smell of the incense that was burnt on the altar removed all the smell of blood and death from the sanctuary. In reality, the aroma of the incense represents the prayer of the saints, Revelation chapter 5 verse 8. Each day in our lives must begin and end with prayer. For, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, James chapter 5 verse 16. Prayer is a beautiful experience that draws the Christian into the very presence of God. Every sincere prayer is heard in heaven. It ascends to the sanctuary above where Jesus ministers and he presents it to the Father. Behind the second veil, is the room called the most holy place or the holiest of all. This room contained only one piece of furniture, the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Testimony. This Ark was a golden box that contained the Holy Law of God, written with God's own finger on two tables of stone. This Holy Law was often referred to as the Testimony or the Covenant, the Ten Commandments. While the Ten Commandments, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that budded were inside the Ark, other ceremonial laws written by Moses were placed on the side of the Ark. The ark was covered by a lid called the mercy seat. On top of the mercy seat were two angels of glory, cherubims, one at each end, with their wings stretched forward to touch one another, thereby overshadowing the mercy seat. The heads of the angels were bent down, and they were looking reverently towards the mercy seat. In between the two angels was the Shekinah glory, a supernatural bright light, the visible manifestation of the presence of God. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, Exodus chapter 25 verse 8. Indeed, God gave them a manifestation that he was dwelling with them, Exodus chapter 25 verses 16 to 22. Day by day, several tens, hundreds, or thousands of God's people came to the sanctuary to confess their sins and offer sacrifices. On a daily basis, the priests worked in the outer court and in the holy place on behalf of the people, and sins of all sorts were transferred to the sanctuary which represented Christ, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 6. But the sins did not remain on the sanctuary forever. There was a day on which all the sins were cleansed and removed from the sanctuary. This day was called the Day of Atonement, Leviticus chapter 16. Our next video will be dedicated to the discussion of the Day of Atonement. Therefore, we will end today's discussion at this point. But the point is, Jesus, the Lamb of God, shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for us in reality. The continual killing of animals should have reminded the people of Israel of the coming Messiah and prepared their minds for the Redeemer, but Satan blinded their eyes to the real significance of the Messianic prophecies. Therefore, they rejected Christ at his first coming. Today, we need not repeat their mistake. We need to go to God through faith in Jesus with a repentant heart. We have to confess all our sins and sacrifice every aspect of our life on the altar through faith in Christ. He will forgive and reconcile us to the Father. It does not matter how many sins we have committed or how deep we have sunk in iniquity, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 Bringing today's message to a close. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. If you found this beneficial then subscribe, like, and share with your family and friends. Thank you.